name is Chris Neby. I'm the creator of the Mysterious China series. Today, I like to address the issue of the Dayu Islands. These islands have recently become a catalyst for Pacific aggression. The Ayu Island conflict is one of those disturbing relics of post-imperial colonialism, which continue to haunt Africa, the Middle East, and Asia to this day. In this particular case, it is Imperial Japan, which in 1895, after the first Sino-Japanese War, annexed the Dayu Islands. These islands have been Chinese territory since ancient times. The issue of the Diaoyu Islands is best understood in the context of a comprehensive history between China and Japan, which will be addressed in chronological order. While much of this history is disastrous and at times horrifying, the purpose of this film is to encourage reconciliation. Geographically separated by only a narrow stretch of ocean, China has strongly influenced the Japanese culture. Despite introducing Zen Buddhism, the arts of writing, philosophy, architecture, and law to Japan, the relations between the two countries have been tragic since time immemorial. The first recorded armed conflict between China and Japan took place in 663 AD during the Tang Dynasty in the Battle of Bekgong in which Japan attacked and was defeated by China. This set the stage for future tensions. Maritime trade between China and Japan has always been important. The ports of Ningbo and Hangzhou in Chejiang province had the most direct commercial links with Japan. Japanese pirates were a constant problem, not only for Chinese and Korean traders, but for the Japanese as well. At that time, Japan was also ravaged by civil wars. Subsequently, the Ming Dynasty, which ruled from 1358 to 1644, decreed that Ningbo was the only port where Japanese-Chinese trading could take place. Toyotomi Hideyoshi was one of the great unifiers of Japan. He wanted to conquer China. When Korea, at that time a vassal state of China, refused to permit Japan passage through their territory, Toyotomi Hideyoshi invaded Korea and eventually Manchuria in 1592. But the Japanese were unable to keep their supply lines open because Korean guerrilla forces continued disrupting them. Subsequently, the Japanese were forced to accept a truce in 1593. It lasted about four years, after which Hideyoshi once again attacked. This time, the Chinese and Koreans were well prepared and again defeated Japan. The frustrated Japanese troops retreated from the Korean peninsula, obliterating cities and slaughtering civilians as they went. In 1633, in order to once and for all ward off foreign influences in Japan, the Tokugawa shogunate decided to abolish all international trade and have no more direct links with the outside world. In China, defending Hideyoshi's second invasion had drained the treasury of the Ming Dynasty and left it vulnerable against the Manchus, who eventually ended the Ming Dynasty and established the Qing Dynasty in 1644. During the early Meiji Restoration era of Imperial Japan, the Meiji Emperor fought with China over control of the Ryukyu Islands, which were an independent kingdom and vassal state of China. In 1879, Imperial Japan annexed the Ryukyu Islands and established the Okinawa Prefecture. Fifteen years later, the First Sino-Japanese War began in 1894 not only over the control of Korea, which was still a vassal state of China, but also because Japan wanted to conquer Manchuria yet again. Strategically located and rich in natural resources, Manchuria had been a battleground throughout the centuries, 
as China, Japan, and Russia fought bitterly for control over it. The history of this land between the Yellow Sea and the Amur River, which forms its border with Russia, has been written in blood and tears. After more than six months of fierce fighting with thousands of civilians massacred by Japanese invaders, the weak Qing dynasty agreed to a ceasefire. On April 17, 1895, in the Treaty of Shimonoseki, the Qing dynasty was forced to recognize the independence of Korea, cede to Japan in perpetuity the Liaodong Peninsula as well as the Penghu Islands and the island of Taiwan. In addition, the Qing dynasty had to pay a huge ransom in cash. At that time, Imperial Japan also annexed the Diaoyu Islands as spoils of war and immediately incorporated the uninhabited islands as part of the Okinawa Prefecture under the sovereignty of Japan. This was done even though the Diaoyu Islands had historically been Chinese territory and the annexation was never part of the Shimonoseki Treaty. Within China, the devastating defeat by Japan and the acceptance of the humiliating Shimonoseki Treaty, along with many foreign nations vying to colonize China, became a catalyst for political change. The Righteous Harmony Society, a Chinese nationalist movement opposing foreign influence and imperial colonialism, started the Boxer Rebellion, which lasted from 1899 to 1901. The Boxers refused to accept the fact that the proud ancient civilization of the Middle Kingdom had been brought to its knees by foreign gunboats, British opium, and Japanese military oppression. The Imperial Colonial Nations Alliance defeated the Boxer uprising and summarily executed all those suspected of being Boxer sympathizers. The Russian Empire and the Qing Dynasty had maintained a long peace since the 1689 Nurchinks Treaty. However, Tsarist forces of Alexander II, the Liberator, took advantage of the decaying Qing Dynasty by imposing the 1858 Aigun Treaty and the 1860 Convention of Peking, in which China had to cede territory in Manchuria, much of which is still held by Russia to this day. The 1904-05 Russo-Japanese War was the first great war of the 20th century. It grew out of the rival imperial ambitions of the Russian and the Japanese empires over control of Manchuria and Korea. Russia also wanted a warm water port with access to the Pacific Ocean. The Japanese defeated the Russians in a series of battles on land and at sea pushing the Russians to retreat north of the Amur River. In a peace treaty, Imperial Russia recognized Korea as part of the Japanese sphere of influence and agreed to evacuate parts of Manchuria. Continued intense rivalry among Great Britain, Russia, the United States, Australia, Germany, France, Austria, Italy, and Imperial Japan prevented China from being carved up into many separate colonies by these allied nations, known as the Imperial Powers. Each vied to enlarge its colonial holdings, but their infighting resulted only in an even more chaotic status quo. The 10th imperial colonial power in China was Portugal, which controlled Macau. Contrary to the other imperial colonial powers, Portugal enjoyed friendly relations with China. For mutual benefit, the Ming Dynasty had leased Macau to Portugal in 1558 as a trading port. In 1999, Sovereignty over Macau was transferred back to China, and since then, this former trading port has become an international gambling and entertainment center, surpassing Las Vegas in profits. 
but the continuous invasions by foreign imperial colonial powers in the 19th century had dragged the Middle Kingdom into an abyss of suffering and backwardness, which in turn intensified the Chinese people's yearning for peace and harmony. The resentment against the imperial colonial powers and the sense of historic injustice continued to fester and inspired revolutionary forces within China. The weakened Qing dynasty continued to disintegrate during the Xinhai Revolution, finally collapsing after the Wuchang Uprising of 1911. Having ruled China since 1644, the Qing dynasty was replaced by the Republic of China, which was formally established on January 1st, 1912. This ended over 2,000 years of imperial rule in China. The much-revered revolutionary Dr. Sun Yat-sen was the first president and founding father of the Republic of China. He received his medical degree from the University of Hong Kong and had extensively traveled in the West. Dr. Sun's political philosophy is known as the three principles of the people, nationalism, democracy, and the people's livelihood. Dr. Sun passed away in 1925. His mausoleum is a testament to the great legacy he left behind. It is situated at the foot of Purple Mountain in Nanjing, the capital of Jiangsu province. An interesting example of how alliances were short-lived, opportunistic, and constantly shift between the imperial colonial nations occurred during World War I. Right after World War I had started, Japan and Great Britain joined forces in 1914, attacking and occupying the German colony and port city of Tsingtao on the Yellow Sea. Japanese imperialistic ambitions steadily increased during the 1920s, focusing on the complete conquest of Manchuria. But the powerful Chinese warlord, Chang Zhou-lin, stood in Japan's way. As a result, in 1928, the Japanese assassinated Chang Zhou-lin by bombing his train. Imperial Japan's military aggressions continued and culminated in the 1931 Mukden incident, which was the explosion of a railway track. The Japanese had engineered this so-called act of sabotage, using it as a pretext to invade all of Manchuria, and immediately established the puppet state of Manchukuo with Pu Yi, the last emperor of the Qing dynasty, as its sovereign. In Manchukuo, the Japanese mobilized more than 10 million Chinese for slave labor in manufacturing industries and agriculture. Taking advantage of Manchuria's fertile soil, large opium poppy plantations were cultivated. Known to mankind since prehistoric times, opium is the oldest and most widely used narcotic. It has always had an ambiguous reputation, on one hand, it is addictive and deadly, and on the other, utilized extensively in medicine as a painkiller. It is the latex obtained from the opium poppy, which is frequently processed chemically to produce heroin for the illegal drug trade. In 1937, the League of Nations in Geneva, Switzerland, the forerunner of the United Nations stated that 90% of the worldwide illegal opium and heroin trade was in the hands of Japanese drug dealers. Ultimately, it was the Marco Polo Bridge incident in Peking that finally started the full-scale Second Sino-Japanese War, which lasted from 1937 to 1945. During that time, Imperial Japan's ferocious war machine not only conquered most of China, but also committed some of the most atrocious war crimes in the history of mankind, such as the 1937 Nanjing Massacre. 
the rape of Nanjing raged on for three months, with more than 300,000 civilians savagely slaughtered. In honor of the victims, the Nanjing Massacre Memorial was built in 1985 on the grounds of the mass graves with Wu Weishan sculptures vividly capturing the horrors of that dreadful time. Underneath these stones rest the remains of the innocent victims. Without warning, in May 1939, Imperial Japan fanatically attacked Russia, but the Soviets beat back the Japanese and drove deep into Manchukuo. The Japanese losses were enormous. Desperately, Japan tried to stem the red tide, but failed and was forced to retreat. In August of 1939, the Red Army suddenly retreated as well, while propaganda loudspeakers blared, announcing the withdrawal of the Soviet forces. The gullible Imperial Japanese General Staff swallowed the Soviet ruse. The next day, to their complete surprise, the Red Army began an unexpected and devastating offensive, keeping the retreating Japanese on the run until September 18, 1939, when Russia forced Japan to sign an armistice agreement. Just 16 days earlier, Nazi Germany had invaded Poland, touching off World War II. This war, conceived in the minds of two dictators, Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini, took the lives of millions and change the world forever. Meanwhile, the slaughter in the Far East continued as Imperial Japan occupied more and more of China and Southeast Asia. Why have the Chinese, who in all their 4,000 years of history have never waged an aggressive war, been forced to fight? To fight and die by the millions. Because China is land, four million square miles of and because China is people, 450 million of them, and because Japan had a plan to use them both. Phase one, the conquest of Manchuria for raw materials. Phase two, the absorption of China for manpower. Phase three, a triumphant sweep to the south to seize the riches of the Indies. Phase four, the eastward move to crush the United States. One fact was obvious. China was to be the giant back on which Japan would ride to world conquest, just as Russia was to be enslaved for German use. On December 7th, 1941, Imperial Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, destroying most of the U.S. Pacific Fleet. 2,402 Americans were killed and 1,828 wounded. The attack came as a profound shock to the American people, and as a result, the United States of America entered World War II. As Japan conquered more and more countries in Asia, hideous war crimes, which have been well documented, continued to escalate. The 1945 Nuremberg Charter defines war crimes as, quote, violations of the laws or customs of war, which include crimes against enemy civilians and combatants. Japanese war crimes ranged from massacres of non-combatant civilians to horrific experiments with humans, biological warfare, and the use of weapons of mass destruction. 
Most European nations had already realized their imperial colonial conquests. When, in the late 19th century, Japan followed the lead of those world powers, developing their own imperial colonialism and pursued their objectives aggressively. The scorched earth strategy, sanctioned by Emperor Hirohito himself, directed Japanese imperial forces to kill all, burn all, and destroy all. This policy, also called the Three Alls policy, was implemented with brutal force in China by General Yasushi Yokomura and resulted in the killing of millions of Chinese. Most of them were males between the ages of 15 and 60, suspected of being potential threats to Imperial Japan. Okamura was convicted of war crimes at the Tokyo Tribunal, but never served his sentence and died in 1966 at his home in Tokyo. Based in a suburb of Harbin, the largest city in the Japanese puppet state of Manchukuo, the infamous Unit 731 conducted ghastly experiments, including, but not limited to, vivisection and amputations without anesthesia under the command of Surgeon Major General Shiro Ishii. Shiro Ishii was never prosecuted for any war crimes. The United States of America granted him and his team immunity in exchange for full disclosure of the weapons of mass destruction warfare data collected from their extensive experiments. Over half a million Chinese were killed with experiments of bacteriological warfare with bubonic plague, cholera, anthrax, and other lethal diseases. During the Second Sino-Japanese War, weapons of mass destruction were extensively used against the Chinese. Rather than taking Allied airmen as prisoners of war, it was common practice to execute them after the Japanese had captured and interrogated them. During World War II, as the Americans cut off Japanese supply lines, starving Japanese soldiers on remote Pacific islands survived by committing acts of cannibalism. One of the greatest tragedies was the plight of comfort women. These were young, innocent girls forced into sexual slavery in Japanese military brothels in occupied countries. Hundreds of thousands of comfort women endured serial rape day and night in these so-called comfort stations. They came from China, Korea, and later from all over the Japanese-occupied territories in Asia, among them Australians as well as Dutch from Indonesia. Eventually, some of these women bravely came forward, writing about their traumatic experiences in their memoirs. The most well-known of these authors, Jan Ruff O'Hearn, also testified at the U.S. House of Representatives Foreign Affairs Committee about her ordeal as a sex slave, which started when, at the age of 19, she was captured with her family by the Japanese in the Dutch East Indies, today's Indonesia. As Japan continued to conquer Southeast Asia, the war crimes committed by imperial forces continued to mount. The 1942 Bataan Death March in the Philippines was the forcible transfer of an estimated 80,000 Filipino and American prisoners of war after the three months devastating Battle of Bataan. Thousands died before they reached their destination. It was followed by the 1942 Laha Massacre of Australian and Dutch civilians who were bayoneted and beheaded in cold blood. At the same time, the Bunker Island massacres in Indonesia took place, where these Australian nurses were ordered to wade waist deep into the ocean and were then machine gunned to death. However, one of them survived and in 1947 gave evidence of the massacre at the Tokyo War Crimes Tribunal. During the 1942 Suk Ching massacre in Singapore, 
an estimated 90,000 civilians were executed by the Japanese in an act of systematic extermination. Shortly thereafter followed the Parrot Sulong massacre of Australian and Indian prisoners of war in Malaysia. In 1943, during the Wake Island massacre, 98 American civilians working as slave labor were executed by the Japanese. After the 1944 Palawan massacre in the Philippines and the 1945 Khao Gong massacre in Burma, Japanese atrocities finally culminated in the 1945 Manila Massacre, where over 100,000 civilians were killed and the city totally destroyed. These are just some of the sad statistics of Imperial Japan's war crimes that are to this day avoided or whitewashed in Japanese history school books. Japan's hawkish politicians continue to deny the terror and suffering their nation unleashed on their Asian neighbors before and during World War II. To this day, no post-World War II Japanese government has apologized to China for the war crimes of Imperial Japan. Japan's arsenal cities was selected as the first to feel the weight of atomic power. 21 days after the New Mexico dress rehearsal, a lone B-29 was over Hiroshima carrying an atomic bomb. At 8.15 in the morning of August 6, Japanese time, the first atomic bomb hit an enemy target. The bomb was aimed to explode above zero point. From the instant of that first blast until Hiroshima vanished from the list of living cities, the president delivered an ultimatum. Surrender or face complete destruction. The Japanese ignored the ultimatum. It was evident that atomic power to break the enemy must become the tale of two cities. Nagasaki was selected to become target city number two. Exactly three days after Hiroshima, a B-29 set out for Nagasaki. At 10.58, the morning of August 9th, the bomb was exploded above the city, and in the towering mushroom, Japan could read its doom. This was more than a routine bombing. It was the funeral pyre of an aggressor nation. The bomb had been purposely exploded high, so that the greatest part of its radioactive material was dissipated in the stratosphere. In order to force Imperial Japan to surrender in World War II, the United States of America committed the ultimate crime against humanity by dropping atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, killing hundreds of thousands, obliterating cities, and contaminating the environment. Thereafter, on September 2nd, 1945, the Empire of Japan finally surrendered unconditionally. flagship of Admiral Halsey's third fleet becomes the scene of an unforgettable ceremony marking the complete and formal surrender of Japan. It is Sunday, September 2nd, 1945. Cameramen and reporters of many countries record this historic moment. 
a war which had entered its eighth terrible year in China, which had raged for three years and nine months for America and Britain, which was the brutal, costly eastern half of the most horrible worldwide war in human history, is now within minutes of ending for good. The time is 9.05 a.m. The Japanese have been on board exactly 10 minutes. Swarms of United States aircraft fly in formation overhead as the ceremony ends. The final United Nations victory has been won. The war is over. Peace is here. In the 1943 Human Rights Treaty of Cairo in Egypt and the 1945 German Potsdam Proclamation, British Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill, US President Harry Truman, and Soviet Marshal Joseph Stalin ordered Japan to return to China all ceded territories of the 1895 Shimonoseki Treaty. It is at this point that the Diaoyu Islands issue could have been easily resolved. The Diaoyu or Senkak Islands, as they are now called by Japan, were not part of the Shimonoseki Treaty because Meiji Imperial Japan had annexed the islands in 1895 in a moral infringement against China's sovereignty. Japan treated the islands as war booty and incorporated them as part of the Okinawa Prefecture. This is the historic truth that the Japanese government continues to ignore today. In this connection, it is interesting to note that only in 1900 did Imperial Japan adopt the name Senkak for these islands that had always been known since ancient times by their Chinese name, the Diaoyu Islands. In the 1951 San Francisco Treaty between Japan and the USA, the Diaoyu Islands were placed under the administration of the United States. In vain, both Beijing and Taiwan protested this U.S. administration of the Diaoyu Islands. Neither the People's Republic of China nor Taiwan were consulted nor invited as signatories to the 1951 San Francisco Peace Treaty. This clearly demonstrates the political climate of those days, which was dictated by Cold War hysteria. This is the big picture an official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. Japan is the key to the fate of the Far East. Once again, for the second time in the march of modern history, those words have urgent reality. But now there is a difference in their meaning. The United States Army has come to know Japan well in recent years, in war, in occupation, and finally, in partnership. Our ties of friendship with Japan are strong. In this fact lies part of our strength and much of our hope for peace. This is Sergeant Stuart Queen inviting you to be with us on this same channel next week for another look at the big picture, the United States Army in action. The Big Picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the Army at home and overseas. It is arguable that the real Dayo Island conflict stems from the so-called administrative rights of the United States. America, as a third party, has dictated control over this contested territory since World War II. In the 1951 San Francisco Treaty, America failed to support a fair and constructive solution, resulting in denied justice for China. The uninhabited Diaoyu Islands lie northeast of Taiwan and west of Okinawa. The territory consists of five small islands and three rocky outcroppings, 
representing a total land mass of no more than seven square kilometers or three square miles. The Diaoyu Islands are already shown as part of China in the early maritime charts of the famous Chinese navigator Chang He, a favorite of the Ming Dynasty Emperor Yongle, who reigned from 1402 to 1424. Chang He commanded a massive fleet of ships that sailed all over Asia, Arabia, and Africa. At that time, China had the largest fleet on Earth. In contrast to the later European imperial colonialists, the Chinese explorers did not plunder or enslave the newfound lands, but only introduced their culture, exchanging gifts and spreading goodwill. The voyages of Chang He were diplomatic landmarks. Another historic fact is that Japanese maritime charts of 1783 as well as the official 1876 map of Imperial Japan show that the Diaoyu Islands were not part of Japan. After 1949, the People's Republic of China continued to address the Diaoyu Islands problem but neither Chairman Mao nor Premier Zhou Enlai forced the issue with the United States, which held the administrative rights because these Chinese leaders wanted to establish friendly relations with America. In the 1971 Okinawa Reversion Treaty, the United States appointed Japan as administrator of the Diaoyu Islands. Later, the pragmatic Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping striving for economic reform and peaceful coexistence with both America and Japan, made the famous statement, let our grandchildren deal with this problem. However, China has never recognized America's or Japan's administrative right over the Diaoyu Islands. Officially, the United States of America does not take a position on the ultimate sovereignty over the Diaoyu Islands, but it does recognize that the islands fall under the security treaty obligations the U.S. has with Japan. There remain grave doubts as to the constructive role the United States will play in this ongoing dispute. There is ample evidence that the involvement of the United States in Asian affairs has more often than not heightened tensions rather than eased them. After the recent Diaoyu Islands protests, during which scores of Japanese cars were destroyed, bilateral trade between China and Japan declined dramatically, particularly damaging Japanese automobile sales in China. At the same time, Diplomatic relations between the two countries have been strained nearly to the breaking point. Better understanding of the history of these islands and of the tragedies of the past can only lead to reconciliation between these two nations in the future. The United States of America can quell the tension by encouraging its Japanese ally to return the Diaoyu Islands to China and apologize to the Chinese people for the war crimes of Imperial Japan. Our world has become a global village. We depend on each other. We must understand and respect our diversity. The forces of history determine the future. Thank you.